I was checking the release note of the Figma's latest update in their website, and I found a lot of cool features that might change the way that we are working with these tools. So I was thinking to share this point with you as well in this video. Bear with me until the end of this video, and if you are new here, do not forget to smash the subscribe button, like this video, and share the video with the other designers in your community. My name is Kia, and here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. I usually try to keep myself up to date about the tools that I'm using so often in my working processes, in my daily routines. One of them is Figma indeed. And the way I'm doing it is usually following the uh, release note that they are releasing after each update. In this way, I can get familiar with the new features, new functionalities, and everything that is new in that tool explicitly Figma in this case. And this will help me to kind of increase the efficiency of the way that I'm working with the Figma. And of course, it will have impact on the quality of my work as well. So I really recommend you to do the same thing. Go to the website of the uh, tools that you are using the most and then search for the release note, update note, or the latest updates. Then you would have a list of all the new things that would uh, be available in the tools that you are using. In our case, I did the same thing for the Figma. I went to the figma.com uh, slash release note page and then read the latest updates, latest changes uh, that would be available in the tool soon. And in this video, I'm going to share some of this point that I found personally very interesting. So without further ado, let's check the list of the new updates in the Figma. The first new thing is that now we can see the frame of the device that we are selecting for our prototype within the inline preview as well. Previously, we just had this option to see the device within the final prototype or when we play the preview. But right now we can have it in the inline preview as well. The next new thing that we have in this latest update is that now we can change the starting point of our flow in our prototype by just dragging the label of that flow and drop it in any other frame. We can delete the flow, the starting point for our flow, uh, by just dragging the flow label and drop it somewhere empty in our canvas. In this way, we can delete it very easily. Previously, we had to select the flow label and then uh, from the properties panel in the prototype tab, uh, we could delete the flow. The next new thing that I found it very cool personally and practical is that now we can set the value for the height and width properties for any object that we have in our design to zero. For example, whenever we have an interaction, which in result one element uh, in our design is going to be collapsed completely and to not occupy any space, we can assign or set the value for the height or with properties, no matter which direction we would like to collapse this element to zero. These were only a few of the new updates and changes uh, within the Figma regarding the prototyping. You can find the rest within the list in the Figma website. I will put the uh, link to that page in the description of this video. Now let's continue with the other new stuff. Recently, I have learned that there is one very cool and hidden feature in the Figma, which will let us to select all similar and matching la layers and frames and objects within our design in one go. This is very cool. It will help you to save a lot of time to not search for those matching elements and uh, layers and objects and just select all of them with one click. It works like this. Select one layer and then use the combination key command or Control plus Alt plus A. And this way, the Figma is going to search for all matching layer with the selected layer and then select all together. You can also find this feature inside the toolbar menu. However, in the new updates, this process is going to happen much faster. So Figma is able to select the matching layers much more faster than before. Also, now we can accurately resize and align our object matching layers at one go 
uh, within their individual and separated frame. So we can select one layer, select all matching layers, and start to kind of edit the size of them and alignment of them regarding their parent frame. And a good point is that it works for the text box in the same way. So we can now batch edit the text boxes all around our design. And on top of this, the coolest thing is that now we have a similar feature in the component set. So for example, if we would like to add or change one object within one variant in our component set, we can select one of the variants and then use one option which is going to appear on top in the toolbar. We can activate that and in that case, all the variants are going to follow the changes that we are applying in the first or selected variant. It's going to save a lot of time from us when we are editing our components. And this is it. This was the list of the new updates, new changes in the Figma that I found personally really helpful, very interesting. Please let me know what is the most interesting new feature of the Figma that you are using so often in your work. Now, before I finish this video, I would like to ask one more time to like this video and share the video within your community with the other designers. And of course, if you are new here and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do not forget to subscribe to my channel right now and share your opinion and doubt in the comment section with me. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.